Radio Q, Queen's student television program, is brought to you in part by Procter & Gamble, continuing a long tradition of hiring Queen's students. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Studio Q. I'm Graham Abbey, and for those of you who missed last week's show, you'll know that my former co-anchor, Sherry Ross, has decided to leave Studio Q to pursue a career in television with ATV in Hong Kong. Shari will not be absent from our show totally, however. She'll be our first Asian correspondent, so you can look for her in some future episodes. Uh, in the meantime, Crazy Taisa Lawrence, our production director here at Studio Q, has decided to fill in for this week's show. Thanks, Graham. Glad to be here. Uh, this edition of Studio Q is a very special one. We usually film the show on Thursday mornings, but this week we are at the Grand Theatre as the Queen's Musical Theatre Group gears up for its final dress rehearsal of Kismet. Tonight we'll be taking you uh, behind the scenes to see all the work that goes into the production, as well as giving you a sneak preview as to what's to come. We've also got some great stories on model parliament, how you can save money when you travel, and an exclusive look at the debating club's trip down under. But first, Tim Wilson was on the defensive at last week's AMS Assembly. Remember these pictures of his personal bolorama? Tim thought his antics would go unnoticed, but that was not the case. After we aired a videotape of the event, courtesy of our friends at the Golden Words and Clark Hall Pub, he thought an apology was in order. In a letter released last Thursday, he wrote, quote, The December break provided me with a great deal of time during which I was able to reflect on this and other incidents which I honestly regret. Is this the North Pole or what? Bitter cold plagued Kingston over the last week and forecasts predict a continued deep freeze. Douglas Library was one victim of the weather when pipes burst in the building over the weekend and caused minor flooding. A lot of students are talking about Iman Jamil Alamin, a former member of the U.S. Black Panther Party who visited Queens Saturday night. He drew a large crowd to his talk, sponsored by the Queens Muslim Association. His comments were found quite controversial, as he asserted that homosexuality is sinful and that Christian, Jews, and other religious groups made an error in their choice of faith. He argued that Islam is the only way to success in a troubled world. Still to come on Studio Q, take a trip to Baghdad. A special look behind the scenes of Kismet, the latest production by the Queen's Musical Theatre. Along with the bitter cold and welcome back week, January brings with an important political event, the AMS elections. Reporter Janine Phillips takes a look at what students might expect from this year's race and also what some aspiring politicians should be aware of. With the AMS elections coming up, a glance back at the current executive's record is in order. The Phillips Wilson Monterson team was elected nearly a year ago by a narrow margin of 0.67%. The team emphasized their commitment to SPICE, or the student population that is informed, concerned, and effective, and pledged stronger leadership capability. It was clear from the outset that this team was idealistic. Forever I've been thinking, okay, well, if we win, I'll do this next year. If we lose, I'll do this next year. So, I mean, just after tonight, I have no choices. <laughs> There's nothing more satisfying than this. I just want to do such a good job. We had the idea. Phillips, Wilson, and Minerson's record is a combination of successes and shortcomings. However, it is clear that the publicized elements of the AMS have often been surrounded by conflict and controversy. The division within the AMS earlier in the fall certainly caught students' interest when three commissioners voiced their grievances at an AMS assembly meeting. They criticized the general lack of support and leadership from within the AMS. We have lost touch with the students, and that's, that's the biggest thing, and we have, have, have been out of touch for a number of years. Soon after the commissioner controversy, Catherine Emerson resigned. Among reasons for her departure, Emerson stated her concern for the lack of open lines of communication and trust within the AMS, and the direction taken by the restructuring policy. When we're, when we're heading up the million dollar corporation and you have the title of chair of the board of directors and you overlook 
the operation, the budgeting of all the services within the AMS. You have to be able to support what your AMS executive is doing, um, decisions they're making, statements they're making. And I just didn't feel that um, I could do that any longer. Differences of opinion within the AMS caused divisions, but Phillips asserts that the current administration successfully made the organization more professional and more rational. As well, she hoped that the restructuring concept would work in the future. It's been, it's been so much a part of our lives, and, uh, and so it's, uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to look back and, and remember how much I didn't know 10 months ago, 12 months ago. Regarding yeah. the fulfillment of the SPICE and leadership campaigns, Phillips had this to say. With respect to SPICE, student population that's informed, concerned, and effective, there were many plans um, that were made that perhaps didn't go through. I think we needed to, or we will be doing for our successors, uh, defining exactly what is the responsibility of the council, focusing it on addressing concerns that affect all of the AMS, all students. All. And what should students focus on in this next election? And I think that it's really important to get people that you think will be voicing concerns um, at higher levels because that's a big part of the executive job, um, as well as people that are understanding and, and really care about what the AMS is doing, what students are doing, and, and keep that focus on, you know, we're here for the students of Queens. The nomination period for AMS executive teams ends January 21st. The campaign period runs from the 25th of January to the 7th of February. And the polling dates are February 8th and 9th. I can't predict how I'm going to feel on February 9th, but I think I'm going to be pretty relieved, actually. <laughs> yeah. Continuing our look at the political, budding Queen's politicians recently took part in the Queen's Model Parliament. Stephen T caught up with some of the debate as well as some of the festivities. While many of you spent last weekend recovering from the Welcome Back Week hangover, bundled up in sweaters and blankets once you saw your PUC bill, student politicians from all faculties were recovering in a more traditional fashion associated with this time of year. Yes, you missed it. Last weekend was the annual three-day session of Queen's Model Parliament, a somewhat close simulation of the real events which take place in Ottawa. Ignoring the minor details, such as a progressive conservative government with a liberal leading opposition, as well as the presence of some yogic flyers from the Natural Law Party, the parliamentary sessions were operated in close resemblance to the original, with issues being perhaps arguably more interesting. Uh, <laughs> Colleen Kennedy, a past participant herself, was this year's head of the organizing committee who helped arrange the entire weekend of parliament sessions and social events. I think it's a forum for people to practice their debating skills, not necessarily debating their speaking skills, to learn a little bit about the way parliament works, to um, meet new people, to party, and I guess it's an educational experience all around. We have life science students, some engineers. I, I probably a majority are politics and history students, but we get them from all sorts. We have, we have grad students, we have mature students. It's an eclectic mix. Despite the sub-zero temperatures inside the walls of Grant Hall, it took no time for the issues to heat up in true political fashion. Uh, that the, the Prime Minister and the Tory government have had to uh, quote people such as Margaret Thatcher and Rush Limbaugh this week. Behind the scenes, there were scandals, chaos, and some unusual political practices. But all in all, some key issues concerning labor, immigration, and most notably the marijuana bill were addressed. Mr. Speaker, they're ignoring the addiction, the addiction effect of the prolonged use of marijuana. Addiction to marijuana would only lead to experimentation with harder drugs such as cocaine and heroin. As in past model parliaments, guest political figures from Ottawa were on hand donating their time as speakers of the House, attempting to control the tempers which flared across the floor. Kingston's own Peter Milliken, a former Queen's model parliamentarian, helped shed light on the purpose of the event. You learn something about parliamentary debate, which is an unusual kind of debate. It's far different from 
a debating club where you know you, everything's organized and cut and dried for you. You've got X minutes and you will not be interrupted. In parliamentary debate, you may have limited time, but you will be interrupted. When I was a student at Queen's, of course, I was involved in the model parliament. Getting involved? Did it prepare you for your political career? <laughs> I dare say. You dare say? <laughs> I dare say. With the adjournment of each session, Queen's politicians were able to show their true stripes at the various social events throughout the weekend, including the Saturday night banquet at the Portsmouth Olympic Harbor. Honorable Pauline Browse, a former MP for the PC party, was this year's guest speaker. After which, PC, Liberal, NDP, Reform, and Natural Law Party members drop their briefcases and political affiliations, and as they say in politics, cut some rugs. No one is really sure exactly how long the Queen's Model Parliament has been running. Nevertheless, with a great organizing committee, we have ensured the continuation of the tradition for at least one more year. And with an honor roll of past parliamentarians such as John Crosby and Peter Milliken, we can expect to see some of this year's participants at the real thing in the near future. Vive! Now that's scary. For Studio Q, I'm Stephen Teague, reporting. Students from universities across Canada participated in the annual intercollegiate business competition here at Queen's last weekend. Competition ranged from areas in accounting to labor arbitration. Sir Wilfrid Laurier and the University of Calgary made a strong showing, placing first in two areas. The Inbreds held a special party at Alfie's Tuesday night to celebrate the release of their CD. Special guest Yellowbelly also played, and CFRC broadcast the entire show live on Queen's Radio. The Queen's Journal has a new image. The paper introduced color and a new format to students with its first edition of the term. Why the change? You have to adapt and change with, with the times. and, and uh, the mag It's a bit more of a magazine look than most newspapers, but a lot of newspapers are moving in that direction to compete with, with magazines. So we thought we'd you know, sort of move along in that direction. Studio Q got some feedback on the recent journal changes. Yes, I enjoy the color. I enjoy the new format, but it seems to be lacking that je ne sais quoi. I think it's great. Adds a little bit of color, brings a little bit of life. I think it's actually very fantastic. I like it. I like the pictures on it. I think it's a great idea. Here's some information for all you Arts 94 formal goers. The final date has been set for March 5th at Portsmouth Olympic Harbor, and the theme is Elegance by Twilight. Sign-up times for construction will be posted next week. Check out the Upper Cayley on Thursday the 27th and Friday the 28th to find out when you can slot yourself in. The formal committee has also informed Studio Q that they have a big surprise plan. So we'll all have to wait with bated breath to find out just exactly what that is. Shari Ross isn't the only Studio Q reporter to travel to a different continent over the holidays. Reporter Kevin Reck traveled down to Melbourne, Australia to compete in the Debating World Championships. And he flies this story home from way down under. If anyone's ever told you that debating is dull, then it's time to think again. Students from all over the world gathered in Australia during the first week of January to compete in the 14th annual World Universities Debating Championships, hosted by the University of Melbourne. Queen's, a university whose past is rich with the art of debating, was no exception. The Queen's Debating Union fielded two teams. Joel Harden. What this tournament, as far as I'm concerned, is engaged myself in is the theme of a global village. And Dean Campbell representing one. And Ron Cunane. And if you have to leave here with only one bit of philosophical wisdom, from what I have to say, this is it. Be afraid. They're out to get you. They're all out to get you. And yours truly on the other. And while the Canadian style differs greatly from the Scottish style used at Worlds, both teams did quite well. But after nine tough rounds of debating the merits of cricket and trying to determine whether political correctness was the new McCarthyism, we could not count ourselves among the victors. And so, 
we were relegated to the visitors gallery of the Victorian Parliament where the final round was held. And after an hour of intense debate about Machiavelli, the University of Glasgow emerged victorious. If you ask me, the kilts had a lot to do with it. And although halfway around the world, we were made to feel quite at home. And a trip to Australia just wouldn't be complete without a little surfing. Reporting for Studio Q, from the land down under, where it's 37 degrees Celsius, this is Kevin Rex. Water. Waves aren't big enough to surf. Welcome back to another week of What's On Where. At the shot, buck off of every drink every night this week until 10 o'clock p.m. And if you got the winter blues, be sure to book a smoker at the shot today, and it'll be sure to take those blues away. Back on campus, Alfie's is hosting a super smoker on Saturday, beginning at 12 o'clock until 6 o'clock p.m. And at 7, Alfie goes to the Caribbean with a jamming Jamaica reggae night. Don't miss Scott Sympathy B and the lowest of the blow on Wednesday night. Live entertainment is back at the QP, beginning on Friday at 4 o'clock with Steve Bond. Saturday, come down and see the movie Menace to Society. And if you have a special celebration coming up, be sure to book a private party at the QP. Just call 545-2740. That's it for What's On Wear this week. Have a great weekend and be sure to stay warm. Unless you have to go off and get a prop, stay on stage, please, okay? <laughs> Sounds great. Could you take it from the same place? Same again? We started at the end of September with auditions. The cast was formed uh, over the span of a week with uh, auditions and callbacks. And the rehearsal started, I think, the second week of October, and we went all the way to the end of November. Uh, auditions for the orchestra started in October, and uh, we're done. And they've been practicing since October. So, uh, you know, an enormous amount of work has gone into the production. The story itself is, is quite a spoof on a lot of the Aladdin, sort of Alibaba 40 Thief type, type shows. It, I've, I think it's a riot. It, yeah. You deserve encouragement. One denari is, is not enough to encourage me. Tangents! Tangents! No. It's not enough. You're too stingy. No. <laughs> now the beggars tell us what to give. Kismet's about uh, a man who has been controlled by fate, and uh, the whole play centers around uh, two main themes, which one of them is, is the main one is fate, and uh, the only reason this guy happens to take advantage of all these situations gets, he gets put in is because he's quick on his feet. Uh, and the second theme, I think, really, is, is your traditional musical theme of love. And uh, in this play, there's two types of love. There's sort of the young, innocent, schlocky, you know, oh, I love you, oh, I love you, John Marsha, running across the field kind of thing. And that's Marsana and the Caliph. They're very innocent lovers. The other one is the poet Anne Laloum, who is the uh, wazir's wife, who's very dissatisfied with the wazir, who doesn't pay attention to her at all, and basically just ignores her, and she falls in love with the poet, and they're, uh, they've both sort of been around the block, they're a little more experienced, and it's not quite the same thing, it's not quite the same young innocence. So those, that's basically the, the two big themes in Kismet. transcript blues, that perfect job just doesn't seem to be popping up in the immediate future. Ever think about just taking off and throwing your bathing suit, a towel, a couple pairs of undies and some shorts into a knapsack and trekking around the world? Well, the only thing that's really holding us back is the money factor. On this week's It's Your Money, Jem Andu looks at the pros and cons of traveling safely and cheaply. If Kingston, Ontario is not your favorite place to be this time of year, and if images of backpacking through faraway lands have been dominating your thoughts lately, then you are probably one of the many students who showed up to hear Gil White's travel adventures this past Tuesday night in Ellis Auditorium. 
quite entertained his audience with down-to-earth suggestions about what he felt were the best and cheapest ways of getting around. His advice to minimize costs and maximize enjoyment? Plan in advance, budget your funds, and keep an open mind when traveling. I mean, trying to get point across, you don't need thousands of dollars. I mean, a lot of you probably have this fixed idea that you need five or six thousand dollars to go for three or four months. That's a lot of money to save up for, especially when you're paying for your schooling. White stressed one other factor. Don't be afraid to flaunt the fact that you're Canadian. Now all I had to do was say the word Canada. The coach from Kiev took me into the dressing room to meet the whole team. <laughs> But students had mixed reactions about what White had to say. I didn't really recognize, I think, the differences, especially today, that do exist for women and men traveling. But um, it, was, it was really interesting. I don't know, like I said, knocking on doors in the countryside and trying to get into a farmhouse might be a little bit much for me, but just trying to really get to know like the people that you're with and getting rides. Like I really like the idea of, of hitchhiking rather than taking the trains everywhere and then talking to the drivers and stuff. I thought it was really cool. But even if you budget carefully, some students still can't afford to travel. Other options exist, though. Try getting involved with certain clubs on campus who will pay your way, while at the same time providing you with invaluable experience. Darlene Lim from Queen's Project on International Development explains. Other expenses that come up, such as materials and equipment, but I mean, the only thing that they'll have to worry about is uh, things like spending money. But otherwise, uh, Cupid covers everything else because we can't afford to pay them a salary, but we have to take care of all other expenses. But if you're forced to finance the trip yourself, be sure to check out your local travel agency before you go anywhere. Contrary to popular belief, they're not out to hand you the most expensive package deal. Travel consultants are aware of the importance of getting the most out of your trip, even if you're a student. A couple of months and, and okay. two or three thousand, yeah, you should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can do that practically with a tour, you know, and uh, not compromise your safety. And then on the tour, it would be groups of people your own ages so that you get to meet people. And then if you wanted to do something um, after the tour was completed, you know, you, then you can go around and do hostels and things on your own. And uh, at least you have somebody to, to do it with or a group. And there's always safety in numbers. So if you're planning on traveling anywhere in the near future, be sure to do your homework first. Talk to travel agents, friends, or anyone who's had any experience, not only to get a feel for where you're going, but also to gain a perspective on whether or not it's five-star hotels or youth hostels that are more within your budget. For Studio Q, I'm Jen Mondu reporting. I plan to get at least eight hours of sleep from now on. <laughs> I, I'm just walking around like a zombie. I'm skipping classes, sleeping. What was the question? <laughs> well, I'm spending a lot of time in the washroom. Eating, trying to get the water, running through our pipes again so we can take showers because we're totally frozen out right now. We work at the university now, so we weren't welcome back, I guess, the way students were. It was, hey, get back to work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was. It was get back to work week <laughs> as opposed to welcome back week. I think I can um, do my laundry and take another week off. I'm uh, making an appointment with uh, Dr. Jack Kevorkian this week. Uh, we'll see what we can do, but I don't know. The damage may be irreparable. Well, finishing off all the essays that I have overdue from first semester. Grow on my facial hair and go on to see Kismet. Well, I spend most of my time curled fetal in a ball, whimpering silently to myself and irritating my housemates. Uh, well, I'm trying to sleep, but um, assignments keep getting in the way. So if you can get rid of my assignments, then I'll recover quite well. I'm planning my uh, return into the World Wrestling Federation. Well, I don't know. I think to ease into the term, I think you'd be more inclined to have like a few more parties throughout the uh, rest of the term. And then I don't think I'd like to recover from it. I'd like to continue it, actually. And now, a special word from our corporate sponsor, Procter & Gamble. Do you have the summer job blues? Are you in third year? Want to get a head start in your career? Then why not consider Procter & Gamble's summer internship program? But I'm not in commerce. You don't have to be in commerce. There are opportunities in finance, sales management, systems, brand management, and manufacturing. 
So pick up an information package at Career Planning and Placement near Vic Hall. Procter & Gamble is looking for highly motivated people from any background or discipline. But you'd better hurry. Applications are due by January 28th. Next week on Studio Q, House Hunting. It's that time of year to brave the elements, gather together your closest friends, and look for a place to put a roof over your head. We look at the do's and don'ts of house hunting. Next week, only on Studio Q. Joe Byrne with Studio Q Sports. This past weekend, the women's water polo team played at McMaster, suffering losses to the Varsity Blues of Toronto, the Carlton Ravens, and Mac. But the team managed to pull off a strong showing over Brock with the final score of 16 to 2. On the scoreboard, the Queen's men's curling team strengthened its position at the top of the East Sectional Division of the OUAA. The Golden Gales posted a 3-1 record to share the lead with the RMC Redmen. In basketball action, the men's and women's teams hosted the Ottawa GGs on Tuesday night in Bartlett Gym. The women's team, coming off a decisive victory against the Carlton Ravens on the weekend, winning 60 to 39, were unable to repeat against Ottawa, who defeated Queens 77 to 61. In the OIIAA, Vicky Wilson of Queens leads the scoring with an average of 28 points a game. The team posts a 1-1 record and is set to play Laurentian this weekend. Men's basketball action last weekend resulted in a loss to Carlton, 80 to 75. The Gales were tied at the half in their battle against the Gigi's, but came up short, losing 83-81. The men's team drops to 0-2, awaiting a win possibly against Laurentian on the weekend. The Queen's gymnastics team traveled to McMaster over the weekend, where the women placed second by only one point. The men's team faced tough competition by pre-Olympic candidates, finishing in last place. At the rink, the women's hockey team competed in the cross-border challenge where Canada won 16-2. The women's team was victorious in three other games, beating Windsor 5-1, RIT 4-1, and St. Lawrence U 3-2. In OUAA hockey, the men lost to Waterloo 5-3 and against Laurier with a final score of 3-2. The team is now in third place in the Mideast standing with a record of two wins and 14 losses. That's sports for this week. That's it for this week's episode. Thank you for watching Studio Q. Uh, and our thanks again to Crazy Taser Lawrence for stepping in. A reminder, we will have a permanent replacement next week. Thank God. That unlucky girl. Yes. Uh, anyway, our question this week is... Who, where was our reporter Kevin Rex over the holidays? Where was he? And if you know that... And if you know that, you will receive a terrific teacher from Dr. Gertie's. And uh, we'll announce our winner last week with the help of the Studio Q Orchestra. Hit it, Jeff. The winner is... Jen Wilson! Jen Wilson! Wasn't that good? Thank you. Um, okay. No, if, if you do, if you... Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, what I was going to say is, uh, if you want to send us a letter, yes, go ahead and do it. Because we're at Studio Q Room 22, John Doach University Center, Kingston, Ontario. And we would love to hear from you. So that's about it? That's it. So Thank you for tuning in. We greatly appreciated it. And if you get a chance, come down and see Kismet, because it looks great. It looks the fantastic. Grand yep. And we will be leaving you with pictures from Kismet. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh.